Hello and welcome to Dandelion Lessons. Today I want to talk about reverence. And I also want to talk about time. They do go hand in hand a bit. And I have gathered here in this <laughs> big array um, some of my treasures um, in my creative and, and I, I dare say spiritual life, um, my daily um, creative and spiritual life that are my tools and my companions in my creative practice and my daily practices. And the idea here, I'll go through them each, I know it's a big jumble of things, but the idea here is that these are things that I hold with reverence and things that matter to me a great deal and that assist me in my journey as someone who wants to have a creative practice in her life. And I think it's really important for all of us that we have things like this that we hold sacred and with reverence. And by reverence, I mean something that we revere, that we hold with great esteem and, and a sense of awe and wonder, and that have a very valuable and precious place in our lives. And it could be so many different things. I mean, quite honestly, obviously people, I mean, that goes without saying. Um, my children and my parents and my sibling, my brother, Michael, and all of my family and my wonderful soulmate, Rick, um, my partner in life, and my cats. <laughs> I mean, th there, are, there are living creatures that I hold with great reverence in my life. But this video is more about the tools in my life that I, that I hold with reverence. So I'm going to go through them and just talk about each of them a little bit in hopes that you will also collect yours and give them more thought and try to understand in a, more, in a deeper way what place these hold in your life as far as your creative practice. And for me, my creative practices, um, and by creative practices, I mean the things that I do every day, encompassed in dandelion lessons, that bring me great joy, that nourish me, that feed my spiritual life, and that I can also use to send out into the world to bring others joy. These are not, um, these are not things that I do um, to sell, so I have a whole nother career that I, that I do for that. And this is more of a practice. My art career as a professional painter um, is also a practice. It's, it's a vocation. I take it very seriously. I have a lot of reverence for that as well. But this is a little bit separate. They, they, they inform one another for sure. Um, but not all of us are professional artists or want to be. Um, but we all, um, we all can have a creative practice that feeds us and nourishes us and informs our lives, no matter what it is that we do professionally. So I'll just start over here on the left and I'll go through. This is not in any order of importance, but just how I've laid them out here. So the first thing I want to talk about is my little box of pastels. These are made by Henri Roche in Paris, in Paris Henri Roche, I should say. Um, this company, this business, is a family business. It always has been. It's a very small and intimate business. Um, I am I'm in awe of their ethics and their work practices and the product they create and the feeling they put behind it. And it was begun in 1720, and I have this little box filled with five colors that I chose. And I use these in my daily meditations, my watercolor meditations. They are very, very special to me. Um, I had to save money to purchase them. Um, they are treasured and valued, and I, I have a great respect for them. And they bring a different element of this earthy, gritty, grittiness instead of the more fluid watercolor. They bring a different element to my practice, and I, I love them. 
So these are my pastels. Um, I also have here my brushes. And if you follow my channel, you've heard me talk about my Badger brush. I will leave a link to that in the description. And this brush is something that is not really meant for watercolor. It's really kind of stiff and doesn't hold a lot of water, but it, it makes it, it like forces me to be loose. It has a very long handle so I can hold it lightly in my hand. It picks up the paint really nicely and it gives me a more expressive line that I really love. It takes the control away from my hand, which is really important for my practices. Um, so this is my badger brush. I also have my triple zero squirrel mop that you've heard me talk about many, many times, and I use this for more um, for smaller works. And when I do want a little more control, it is lovely and beautiful, and um, I treasure it. And then this is a newer brush. <clears throat> it is made by Rosemary and Company, um, which is a handmade brush company out of England, and they make beautiful, beautiful brushes for, I think, a very reasonable price. And this one is called a Triangular SER number 40. And what I love about it is that it holds a lot of water and paint, but it has this unique shape. It's sort of, I don't know if you can see that, but the ferrule is actually triangular. So it has this flat surface and this chiseled um, shape to the, brush, um, to the brush hairs. And it makes really beautiful, fine, fine, delicate lines, but also big sweeps of color at the same time. So it's a very useful brush, and it's fairly new to me. I will also leave a link to this in case you're interested in it. Um, but I treasure this brush. It is, uh, it's becoming a workhorse for me. I really, um, I really appreciate the craftsmanship that went into making this brush. And then I also have my very modest <laughs> um, ink, uh, pen and ink, um, my, my metal nib, which is a manga G nib. It's very common to find these. And then the holder is just this plastic black holder made by Nico, and I believe it's made for manga artists. But I really like the way it feels on my hand. Um, I would love these nibs. They have enough um, softness to them that I can get great line variation. You can see how the nib Displays out really nicely, but it also gives me a very fine line if I want it. And I use this for my um, seeing drawing practice. And I have in this beautiful little wooden box um, my extra nibs. So they're beautiful to me and special and mm, a very useful tool. A very useful tool. And then the ink that I use, I have several inks, to be honest with you, um, that I use, probably four. But this one is fairly new. It's called Smoky Quartz by Edelstein. Um, it's a Pelican ink. It was expensive for me, um, but it's a big bottle. It's a beautiful bottle, and the ink is just exquisite. And when I show you my seeing drawing sketchbook, you'll see what I mean. Um, it's a beautiful warm brown color that when you add water to it separates into gold and yellow and orange and dark dark brown and warm brown and a little bit of blue even sometimes and it's just really an exquisite ink and it has been a great tool um, to me. Um, I'm still learning how to use it well. So that is my ink. I have three others that I use. One is a platinum carbon ink. Um, I think I have it right here which is wonderful when I want to use black and when I want it to be waterproof. So I can put watercolor over it. The Edelstein ink is not waterproof. Okay, so I use this when I when I want to put water on, on it and make it washy. So those are two. I have another um, that I use frequently called Inaho by Pilot Iroshizuki. It is a beautiful kind of wheat, golden, green, brown that I've never been able to find in any other ink, and it is also not waterproof, so I would use it in the same way as this brown smoky quartz ink. And then I also have <clears throat> my Lexington Gray, which is made by Noodlers. I've had this bottle a long time. It's a big bottle, and it fills up my um, my fountain pen. And I love Lexi Lexington Gray because it's softer than black. And it's completely waterproof as well when you allow it to dry first. So it's wonderful for sketching where I'm going to use watercolor. 
So those are my inks, and I keep all of my inks in a beautiful wooden tray that I got um, a long time ago at an antique store, and it, it keeps them near me and organized and, and sort of placed in an honorable position on my work table. So here I have my Hake brush, and I use this to brush dust from my paper when I'm drawing to clean my paper very gently. And it's a very inexpensive item. You can find it wherever you can find Chinese and Japanese art supplies. Um, there are, I think it's traditionally made for putting large amounts of water and ink on paper, but I use it to brush my paper. And it's beautiful, and it's a pleasure to use. And I've had this a long time, and I, um, I love it. <laughs> it's always with me. That's my hake brush. Um, sooner or later you knew I would talk about my Wildthorn watercolors. And this is the Artist for Everyone set, which was created by Kim and myself, my dear friend Kim, um, for the Artist for Everyone video series that I do on YouTube. And a lot of thought went into this and um, it is treasured by me for many, many reasons, but it is my go-to palette <clears throat> for when I create the Artists for Everyone projects and other things. But I also have um, my larger collection of Wild Thorn paints, which are my treasures. <laughs> I mean, they are so exquisite. and. I have to say that I love watercolor and I have many, many paints and I use them. I mean, I love them all for different reasons, but these, when I started using these, they were just instantly different to me and somehow very precious. And they opened up something in me and in my own personal practice. And I will be forever grateful for that. And since then I have slowly collected as, um, all of these colors. I started with a set of six. It was called the Autumn Leaves palette and I was so blown away by this paint. But anyways, these are my great treasures as far as color in my work and also brought me um, another treasure, my dear friend Kim, who was always in my heart and who I have found a true, soulful, um, meaningful relationship with. She's like a sister to me. So, these are my treasured paints, and I keep them on a white porcelain tray on my desk. And next I have this little box that I've had a long, long time. I don't even remember where it came from. I've just always been on my desk in the other room. And a year or so ago, I started putting special rocks in it. These rocks are things that I have found <clears throat> uh, during special times, and then there are a couple um, polished crystals that I have in here, or, or minerals, but mostly it's some, some very, very special rocks to me, and this one in particular I've drawn many, many, many times, and it is one of my greatest treasures, and I found this rock um, when I was newly in love with my sweetheart Rick, and we were sitting together by a creek, and it was kind of a sad day, I remember, um, but anyways, he stood up to go see something in the creek, and when he stood up, this rock was sitting where he was sitting. And I picked it up and put it in my pocket, and I've never let it go. <laughs> so I've drawn it many, many times, and it's very, very special to me. So these are some of the items that I, that I draw in my seeing drawing practice. And I draw them because I hold them in reverence and because I want to know them in a deeper way, and, and they have been amazing subjects for my work. So that is my little box of treasures. I have two others here that um, dear people gave to me. And I keep these on my desk just because they're so colorful. But these are my rock treasures. <clears throat> And so I might as well go into my treasure bowl. Um, this is a little bowl that I keep on my desk and it is filled with all sorts of natural treasures. Some have been given to me by others like this beautiful seashell was given to me by Kim. Some are as simple as a little bud from a maple tree that I found on my walk that I've drawn many, many times. I have seed pods. Look at this little tiny crab shell we found on the beach. It's delicate and it cracked when it got dry it's so lovely 
and I will use these things to draw in my seeing drawing practice. But as you can see, there are many, many kinds of objects in here, even leaves. This was from a trip to the Adirondacks we took in the fall, the first Pussy Willow that I found this year. Um, little bits of seashells from our recent vacation when we went to the beach in Delaware. So many, many things, and these are the things that I reach to draw for my seeing drawing practice. I want something that is small, that can fit in my hand, that my eyes can comb over as my other hand marks down what I see. And it's really important to me to have these little treasures that, that fit in my hand. And what I've learned is that over time, <clears throat> by doing this, picking up things that are quite ordinary, really, that are all over, like these maple seeds, there are, there are a million of them out my door. But when I bring one single maple seed inside and I hold it in my hand and I give it all of my attention and I lovingly draw it on a piece of paper, I am finding what is unique about this specific maple seed and it gives me awe and wonder and reverence for the natural world and gosh, the, the purposefulness of nature. This little dried seed, if the wind carries it just right, by design, it's made to be carried in the wind, and everything is just right, it will turn into a glorious maple tree someday. And I think about these things when I'm drawing them. So this is my bowl of treasures. Again, um, <laughs> really important to me. This is, if, if I had to run out of my house, I would grab these things. And you know, after my cats and my family was secure. So, very, very special. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still fighting allergies, so I'm kind of hoarse. And then this is an example of a book that I treasure. This is a Frederick Franck book. I have many now I've collected, buying them used online. And I just picked this one because it was smaller. But I cannot tell you how much his books have impacted me and informed me and affirmed my beliefs in why I do what I do. These books have helped me tremendously and they're rather new to my life. I mean, maybe six weeks, you know, so I've really taken to them. Um, this one I've read twice and I can't recommend them highly enough. They're, they're really, really special. Uh, yeah, so my books are also treasured things that I hold with reverence in my life. And then this is a journal that I do my seeing drawing practice in. And this is special to me because it was sent to me by my father um, when he was on a trip to Italy. <clears throat> he went to a very revered old um, Italian family that they, they have a, a paper mill. And they make beautiful artist papers. It's called a Malfi. And I have many, many things in here, but I use it mostly for seeing drawing. So here, for instance, this was spotted knapweed that I brought home from the lower pond field near the bike path. Um, and I will just spend time sketching and trying colors and trying to match the colors of, of the plant so I have it in my memory for later if I choose to paint it. Um, but you can see that it, I use it as a sketchbook. Sometimes I skip a page. <laughs> This is bird's foot trefoil that I brought home. So it's, it's full of beautiful things. And um, red clover. But I also use it for my seeing drawing practice. So here's a page right here, a pussy willow branch that you just saw, the maple bud, um, the leaf from the Adirondacks. I mean, I will use my pen that I showed you and ink to draw it. And then here, I just used water on top of that smoky quartz ink and you can see all the beautiful variations of brown. You know, this one, these were sycamore seeds and I drew them with a pen and ink and then used water to bring out how beautiful they are. So this is my sketchbook for seeing drawing. I have others too. Um, I'm sticking with this one now because I finished others and um, yeah. So I, I keep it very special. I have another one that my daughter gave me for Christmas um, that is so, so exquisite. And 
um, it will be my next book when this is finished. So I think it's really important to have a beautiful book um, if you can and something that is, is your place to do your practice in. And it's, it's handmade and it's lovingly made. And so when I use it, I'm, I'm absorbing some of that handmadeness, just like with my paints. But I'm also um, finding my own way to, to, to bring it to life. So these things are treasures to me. And it wouldn't matter if I had a store-bought, um, a store-made sketchbook, you know, something like that. I mean, I don't know if these are handmade. Maybe they are. These are my little watercolor meditation books. They're very inexpensive. Um, they're rice paper journals, and maybe they are handmade. Um, but I fill them with things that are, are very important to me, my daily meditation practice. So it doesn't matter what it is. They all have a special place on my work table, and I, I care for them, and I hold them with reverence. So I thought, um, and th this is my edigami paper that I use for my dandelion lessons that I send out in the mail. And I buy this from Jet Pens. Um, I have not found a handmade source for this yet. Maybe someday I will. But I thought I would just paint a dandelion lesson while I talk about some other things. So I'm going to get set up and then I will be right back. Okay, so if you've watched the videos on dandelion lessons, you know that this practice is a very intuitive practice. I, I spend a moment before I begin, and I'm on video right now, so I, I don't do all of the things that I normally do when I'm just me in my solitude, you know, in the middle of my practice. But how I, how I begin is I take a few moments to honor my tools and to send good intentions into the world, and I center myself. And it's usually very, very early in the morning, so my house is quiet, and the world is still dark, and it's just a very special time for me. So that is how I begin. And there is nothing pre-planned about this, so I open my paints and I'm drawn to a color, and I just begin. So I'm not gonna talk while I do this, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do my practice as best as I can knowing I'm on video.
Okay, so my practice is done. And it's funny, you know, you, you just know when you're done. <laughs> At least I, 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 getting more and more. I mean, every now and then I don't stop when I feel like I should. And, but I'm getting better at stopping when I should. And when I'm finished with these, I take a moment to really look at them. And normally what I do, excuse me, I, I write some words down in my little book of haiku. And, <clears throat> and then when this totally dries, I write those words on the painting. Um, and then I, I send it out in the world to someone to bring them joy. I make a beautiful wrapping paper for them and I wrap them lovingly and I send that joy out into the world. So it's important, I think, that's where time comes in because we're, we're holding our practice with enough reverence that we carve out this time in our day to do these things. And I have to say, you know, I mean, sometimes my life is really busy and I have a lot of professional obligations or family obligations or, you know, <clears throat> other things like that. And I have moments where I say to myself, or at least I have in the past, where I say to myself, you know, you really don't have time for this today. But I, you know what? I have learned that I still need to make time. This practice... I hold in reverence. This simple practice is so nourishing to me and brings me so much joy. And it allows me to fill up my joy so much that I want to share it with others. Um, and I think that is a sorely needed thing in the world. I know what a difference it's made for me in my life. And I, I've seen it make a difference for other people. And so <clears throat> I, just, I just hope that, that you no matter how busy you are, no matter how many obligations and responsibilities you feel the weight of in your life, that you find even 10, 15 minutes in your day that you can carve out and hold sacred for your creative practices. It doesn't matter what that practice is. You can do a different practice every day. It really doesn't matter. But what matters is taking the time to do it and, and holding that amount of time as sacred as anything else in your life, okay? It's very, very vital to me as a human being. Um, it fills me up. It fills my well. Other things fill my well too. But when I don't have time for this, when I haven't made time for this, I feel it. I feel it. It has become like breathing for me. Every single morning I get up, 4 or 4.30 in the morning, and I start my day with these practices. And it has made all the difference. When we were on vacation recently, I still did it every day. Every day. I brought simple things with me so that I could do this practice. So when the dandelion lesson is becoming dry, I use my chop, which is basically my signature for my artwork. And I find a place to put it on my work. And I, I'm feeling it right here just in the blue. And then I have my little dandelion stamp. And that, that puts my mark on it. That's my signature. I also have a video on making a chop and creating your own monogram, which is this right here. Um, that you might want to watch. <clears throat> so, so this dandelion lesson is ready to mail out. I know just who I'm going to send it to. And I hope, I hope that the things that I've talked about today um, have resonated with you in some way. And we all, you know, we all need to find our own way with these things. But I think we all have things in our lives that we hold in reverence. I think reverence is a really important thing to have in our lives. It could be for so many things. Um, as a poet, I hold my, my books of poetry by Emily Dickinson and, and Mary Oliver with reverence. They're, they're in Jane, Jane Kenyon. I have a special bookshelf just for their books. And I know that when I'm needing to read their words, I can go to that bookshelf and stand there and see all of my books carefully lined up on the shelf. And I can pick one and I can open it and be fed. 
Okay, so there are many, many different ways to have reverence in our lives. This is about reverence for our art practice, for our creative practice, for carving out the time and holding that time sacred so that we can nourish ourselves and fill up our wells so we can be better human beings in the world. And that, that is something I wish for everyone. I just wish everyone could do that. I think the world would be a different place. It really would. It would be a different place if every person had the opportunity and the privilege of having a creative practice in their lives. So thank you very much, as always, for being here. I hope you found this useful in some way. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments below. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you.